What's good, man? How you been? I've been good. You've been busy though. Performed at Coachella. Yeah, yeah, Coachella for sure. Uh, that was a great experience. Uh, I've been wanting to do that my whole life. It looked like you had the crowd in your hand, man. It's yeah. It's funny because they had me on an earlier slot, like three p.m. So you know that if that's that really depends on your draw if people really uh, rock with you so it was good to see that people cared about what i was doing yeah 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 now nah, it, it looked like a good time man then you dropped the mr police video yeah very powerful yeah thank you i, I mean, appreciate that there were times I, I started tensing up just watching that yeah 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 a lot of people because it's reality for a lot of people you know what i mean and and we all know like how it is when when that when the police get behind you you know, and uh, and you're a person of color, black person, um, in a spe- in a specific car or neighborhood or whatever it may be, or any any circumstance. So yeah, no, nah, I already know. That's why I tensed up because I started having memories of when I got pulled over. The time I was in the airport and they did yeah. a random bag search because yeah. they said I looked suspicious. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I got it on video too. That's so that, crazy. That's why when I was looking at your video, I was just like, man. It's, it's real, man. But yeah. then you got the project dropping, F65. F65, yes, sir. Man, yes, how sir. you feeling about everything, man? I'm feeling good. You know, I think, like, with this album, I, I say, like, I didn't make this album. God made this album because, like, I was able to tap into something that kind of, I, in a sense, wrote the album for me. I, 90% of the music on there, I did not write down. It was just off the top of my head, and I told the stories that I wanted to tell and I tapped into what I wanted to tap into. But the whole idea is just um, having a conversation about being a person of color around a world uh, that feels good and it doesn't feel like we're attacking nobody. We're just having the conversation, you know? Now, is that your usual creative process where you don't write stuff down and it just comes off the dome or was this just something special? Yeah, I just it just came off the... Uh, the, the the dome for me on this one but i think i've always been practicing it i just got better and better at it over time you know what i'm saying so for me it's like um it's one of them things where it was like a muscle that i was working almost and then by the time i got to this album i damn near mastered being able to not write music and just say shit you know and and then it all makes sense and comes together but it's a divine uh, spirit that I say I, I tap into that creates the music. I was going to ask you, because when I knew we was talking today, I thought back about like the first time we met and we had dinner in D.C. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice restaurant, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even back then, this was like five or six years ago, you already had a buzz. But you've continued to like evolve and grow not only as an artist, but just your fan base. What has been your growth strategy since these past five years since I met you? Being real and being very particular in what I do, you know, um, not oversaturating myself, um, being poised, like having confidence that I'm good. I, I look at myself like a, almost like a stock. If you was to put me in a stock market, it would be very steady going up. Like you wouldn't, you could, you could Rest assured that if you put your money here, it might take some time, but you come back a couple years later, you good, you know? Uh, whereas a lot of people, I didn't see so many people come and go, like so many people come and go. I think my strategy has just been always, you know, working uh, on things that I feel like I believe in in my heart, creating music and taking the time to put albums together, like in a way that people aren't doing as much anymore. Um, there have been many times where I could probably do a song that is very easy to fit into a certain format and do a feature. I got a lot of people, like almost every big artist respects what I do and, and I could reach out. A lot of them reach out to me to do songs with them and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I could do all of those things and make it an easy format to uh, reach another level of commercial success. But I think that I'm building a story that's very unique that nobody's really ever seen in rap music. And, and the best part about it is there's no pressure. It's like, if something happened and I get a platinum record tomorrow, I didn't build so much with so many people. Like I came here, I seen you, I'm like, I know you for, everybody knows that I've been grinding, so it won't look surprising to nobody. But also, I don't have that shot clock of, hey, I gotta hurry up and get a hit. Like, I'm good. Like, I just put my tour up and it's doing well. Like, people care about what I got going on, and, and that's a blessing, you know? 
slow cooking the meal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I, I'm with it. I'm with it. Speaking of the tour, man, uh, looks like you're not just doing domestic. You're going international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going back to, uh, well, I'm doing a little bit of things in Paris during Fashion Week because I, I got a few things that's about to happen that we'll all see soon. Um, and then also I um, um, I did Australia uh, end of the beginning of the year. And so we're going to be going back to Australia I think I'm about to add Asia into the markets too. So, like I said, we just been slowly building. So when it's time, it's gonna be really like ready, you know. What's like your favorite city overseas? Um, overseas, uh, uh, Sydney was really fun. Australia, Melbourne, and Sydney. I love Australia so far. I want to go to Japan. I've never been there before, but I have a feeling that'll be my favorite when I go there. Um. Yeah, London. I always love the people in London and uh, the the vibes they bring. And then, like, in in America, North America, not the United States, Toronto is, like, my favorite city for sure. Man, I've been to Japan. Japan is definitely a vibe. Yeah. You love it over there. Yeah. Um, you know, I tell people all the time that, like, Traveling overseas definitely just opens your mind up and opens you up to new experiences. Mm. Has it changed you in any way or opened your mind up to different things? 100% creatively. Like, there's a couple songs on my album that I made in, in London, and you could feel like you could feel that I was in England when I made that or London when I made that. So, definitely. Like, I think traveling is, is one of the most important things. That's why, I like, my goal is to retire when I'm 40 and focus on my family and, and, and traveling the world with my kids and all of those things. And I would love for my family and kids to be well-traveled, you know, because of those reasons. I figured that out later in my life, and I had to have this as a vessel to be able to do that. But we're here now, so I want to be able to do that for my kids at an early age. Absolutely, man. Open them up early. Yeah. Giving them experiences that we didn't have. Yeah, facts. <laughs> um, the project. F65, man. Uh, how'd you come up with the title? Um, F is uh, basically taking Formula One racing and then um, adding um, 65 instead of one, like F1. So Formula 65. 65 is the year Malcolm X was assassinated. And it's basically continuing the conversation that I believe he was about to have, which changed from radicalism to you know, more brother brotherhood and, and love and, and, and finding true understanding. So me and this album is me continuing the conversation I believe he was getting ready to have before he was assassinated. Man, yeah. that's deep right there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why Mr. Police is what it is, you know. It's a song that sounds and feels good, but the lyrics and what I'm talking about in the videos a juxtaposition to what the music feels and sounds like. So that's the reason why... That's F sixty five in a nutshell, you know. Now you you actually helped direct that video, right? Or you yeah, I directed it. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I worked with um um Anne Sylvester on it, but that was the idea I came up with immediately after making the song. I don't even know how I was done with the song. I was still coming up with ideas and thinking of the video at the same time. I want to talk about some of the other songs on the project, man, and uh, yeah. you could just you know break them down or say whatever you want to say about it. Pit Stop. Yeah, Pit Stop. That's a fun one. I made that song in, I was on tour with Pusha T, and I made that song in the green room, and I rushed to do it because I was trying to hurry up and get, lay something down before his set started, and you could hear the bass and everything. So I was rushing, I was rushing, and I thought I would come back and revise it, but then when I listened back to it, it felt so good, and everything was so like perfect for me. Um, so that was like what it was, but I made the beat that day too. I remember because my 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 friend had the uh, um, the mini piano MIDI and the keys was so small, so I was like playing the chords, but it was like hard to get them perfectly. So if you listen to it, you can hear some parts where the keys is clashing a little bit, but I kind of like that. Sometimes everything don't got to be perfect, you know. I love when art has flaws, you know. I, I've learned to embrace that more and more lately, you know because it's in the moment. So that song is a very in the moment song, yeah. Yeah, and we all have flaws, it's real life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, next one, Thug Tear. Yeah, 
Thug Tear is a special song. Um, shout out to uh, Trail on that. I, I had made the song. Everything was laid out, and I was like, I could hear Trail's voice saying these lines. So we went back and forth on that. Um, but Thug Tears is, is a is a very special song to me because I know that people are going to listen to that and turn up and mosh pit and all these things. But I actually, you know, as a person that barely ever, like, sheds tears, that's one song that I shed tears to because I know the reality of what that song is. It's a lot of people who live that life who have a mentality that's going to be very hard to change and their environment doesn't allow them the opportunity to change it. So it's really like a cry for help. Thug tears, like just being afraid to really literally cry, you know, and and you cry through the actions and the things that you do. And some of that might be killing somebody. Some of that might be your friend died and you don't have no way to um, really let that out but to retaliate, you know. So it's a lit song. It's fun. Like I said, at 65, the message feels good, but what I'm talking about is 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 real. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of those projects you really got to listen to multiple times. Mm-hmm. You're not going to pick up everything the first time. Yeah, though. yeah, and you that's gotta, the you, you got to run it back. And to be honest with you, that's I I don't mind that. It's not for everybody to get right away. I honestly I want people to just enjoy the music. All the deep messages and stuff, I want that to come like the way that my favorite rap album of all time is um, uh, Lauryn Hill, Miseducation. And that's because till this day, I'm still learning new things about that. But the music always felt good. I, 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 if there was one thing I could always count on is the music feeling good. So that's what I, I, was, I, would, I was trying to accomplish when I made this. You did that, man. You did yeah, that. Thank you. couple more. Um Salty update. Yeah, yeah. So uh, update means it was updated. So the name is, is Salty. Okay. But that was fun. It just was me and, and Ellie Chopper. The the original version had Offset on it, but Offset, you know, wasn't able to do the verse. Re- he wanted to redo his shit and, and he didn't get it to me in time. So, you know, maybe there's going to be a remix one day. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But that was me and him and... Um, Chopper at the same time. It was a really good vibe. It's still dope now, though. Like, I made some updates to it, uh, and it's still fun. But, yeah, that was the first day I met Chopper, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He came to the studio the day I met him. I met him at Warner Records' office, and I just said, pull up, and he came and did that, yeah. Yeah, he was just here the other week, man. Good dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad sure. y'all collab, too. For yeah, real, yeah, yeah. I like him a lot. Two good brothers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paper Chaser, I, I like how it starts out like in reverse. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just the beat. I made that on tour in the green, and not in the green room, uh, in a hotel. We just set up in a hotel, and I just like that just came to me. Like all of that stuff, I'm not writing none of this stuff. It's just flowing. Like it's just coming out as I'm like, I'm not even thinking about it. Like I just think about it when I look back at it, and it all makes sense. You know? Yeah. Last one in. This is probably like low key one of my favorites. Again, mm. I gotta listen to the project again. Mm-hmm. But still, your man, I love the, yeah. the not only the Carl Thomas sample, yeah. But you talked about like some real family decisions, yeah, that yeah. people actually go through. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speak on that. Yeah, that was just like um, me tapping into past relationships and things that I've heard about and seen, and and that that sample, I knew I wanted to rap over that sample. Like, I heard it, and I was like, yo, it's time to bring that back, you know? And it's time to really, like, like think about how, um, what am I going to say on this that's really special? I made that actually in London. I remember that. And that was another freestyle, but I was just tapping into things that I'd seen, relationship stuff, all of that, and then kind of piecing together my true thoughts, you know? Um, that was just like some, a diary moment. Yeah. You said some shit on there. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I had to run that one back. I was like, wait, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was dope, though, because, like, that's what people actually go through as far as, like, who's raising the child. Uh-huh. And you said some deep shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, I'm sorry. I got to break down one of the lyrics on here. There's this part where I said, um, the small hand sitting on 6 o'clock for the shit that I used to have. No, for the shit that you used to have, but I'm never looking behind. Cause you know six o'clock is this way, um, 
I always look ahead, but you always look to the side. Your eyes be on three or nine. You know what I mean? It's just like, I was like, damn, I said that when I was done with it. But it's just it's like really poetic the way that I put that together. So. Now, you, you was in a different pocket, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you was, that. You was in a different pocket, pocket for real. Uh, are you still teaching? Yeah, I got a new class coming um, in August. How you like yeah. doing that? It's probably one of my favorite things. I want to see y'all there, to be honest. My goal is to make Harvard look like a HBCU when I'm out there. It's a conference week, so we got, I can't even say the partners yet. Maybe even we could probably even do something cool there too. My goal is to bring everybody in the music industry who wants to either educate or receive education in music business to Harvard's campus because we don't, a lot of us don't even believe we could be there. A lot of us wouldn't even apply. It's not realistic. And for me, you know, we partnering with Howard and, and a bunch of other universities to put this together, but we see ourselves there already. We don't see ourselves at the most prestigious school, arguably in the world. Uh, when it comes to higher education, that name and that brand is the, the biggest. So, you know, for us, it's about like, how do we bring our people to the places that we normally aren't so that we can show the people coming up next that that's possible. That's what it is it's about. So yeah, I'm doing that again. I can't wait. That's like my favorite thing, honestly. Like I like that more than the music, if For I'm real? being real with you. Yeah. What yeah. is it what is it that just gives you joy about teaching that course? It's just like I just told you I've paid two hundred dollars for a high school diploma. It's just a big middle finger to the world and society because I'm not supposed to be able to do that. I don't even have a degree, but I'm smart enough through the things that I've learned and, 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 and experienced, and I'm able to articulate myself enough to be able to teach a class, which shows the world education is important, but it doesn't always have to be in academia. There's so many different ways you can educate yourself, and it shows that kid who was like me, who was in school, not being able to pay attention because they don't care about what's going on. There's real life problems at home that you can't even get out of. And then you have to deal with the fact that you're still a young kid in society. So you still got to be that kid. It's very hard for somebody to see themselves having higher education, let alone being able to teach. But now, because of a course like this, I always say, I said this in an article recently, I changed the algorithmic bias in your mind because now you see me dressed a certain way and you see me pull up, you can you profile me and think that I'm this and then you get a chance to talk to me and it's like, damn, you teach at where? Now the next time you see somebody that looks like me, your mind is, your algorithm is, is messed up. You don't even know how to comprehend what that could be because you... I just showed you we could be so many different things. That's why that course is so important to me. You know what I'm saying? It's a visual representation of change. Reprogram pe reprogramming yeah. people's minds. Exactly. What type of professor is IDK? Like, are you the cool professor that For I sure. can go to you like, hey, man, yeah. you know, uh, we need to talk about this grade. Or are you yeah, the type right. to be like, nah, man, you flunk? Nah. Nah, I don't even believe in tests or quizzes. I believe in teaching with uh, experiences. So I use the five senses, uh, touch, uh, smell, uh, sight, sound through music. Like we work with like, I don't know if y'all know, like Le Labo, that's like a really good candle company. We work with them to have a different scent every, every day of the class so that you remember when you smell that again, you remember what's where you was at and what you was learning that day. We changed the color, like financial literacy day. The whole classroom is green. You know, I'm working with different textures, so foliage and plants and different things like that so that each day there's a new texture for the class. Um, music, food, I want to experiment with truffle and really, like, use that as a, as a uh, reference point for memory. So it's, like, a lot of stuff that, for me, this represents. And I, it's just, like, changing the way we look at class. Like, it's not the boring okay, everyone's sitting behind each other and next to each other. There's no hierarchy. It's a circle. I'm in the middle. I teach on a platform. The students, they teach, they are on the inner layer of the circle and then the outer layer is spectator. So, like, if you came, you'd be on the outer layer to 
be a part of the class as well. The kids and I, uh, I are performing for the people on the outer layer. That's the class. You see what I'm saying? It's really like taking uh, innovation. Like you don't have to go study. If you, if I say something and you remember it, you'll get a pair of Jordans. You'll get a pair of Nikes. You'll get this new shirt or this hat or whatever that we've designed for the class because I'm looking at it as if the, I know I was smart when I was a kid, obviously, because look at what I became. But when I was a kid, I thought I was stupid because I wasn't keeping up with everybody, but it's because I wasn't interested. If you would have put Jordans in my class and you would have put this cool like environment and this food that I can, you know, I would have been able to perform at a high, the level that I really could have. And there's so many people like that that are just not interested. So how do we make it interesting? So I don't believe in quiz, quizzes and tests because that's pressure. I don't want pressure, that's societal pressure. I want it to be like, I love coming to school every day. And I love learning this thing, you know, so. You might be on to something. I think you are reimagining the way our education system could be. Yeah, exactly. That more people could understand and actually mm. gain something from it. Yeah, exactly. Instead of just, like you said, just going to go and being in a system that, you know, quite frankly, hasn't always been friendly to us. Yeah, 100%. No, facts. And you got to remember this, too. The people who put together the educational system more than likely do not come from the backgrounds that a lot of the people struggling with education come from. So it does not appeal to the right people. If you have real life to deal with, you live in a bad neighborhood, you might, your cousin or your brother or your best friend got killed last week. How do you come to school with that mentality of, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to Harvard one day? It's very hard. So... That needs to be tailored to people who have those situations. Otherwise, we're going to keep seeing the same problem in these places where kids are trying to be educated, but they just can't. That's why what I do is so important. I don't really care. Like, I love the rap stuff, but I'm not really a rapper. I'm a problem solver. Rap is just one of the ways that I solve problems. You know what I'm saying? I'm a problem solver, and my passion is educating people. My passion is teaching and I just happened to teach for the past few years through my music, but now it's like I'm getting the music's open doors for a bunch of other ways to teach people. Everything I do is from my heart. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we need to figure out a way to get this in front of the Secretary of Education for the yeah, country. Yeah, for sure. This could be a game changer, man. Um, who are some of the people that you listened to when you was coming up? Uh, Eminem, 50 Cent, Michael Jackson, Jackson 5. Kanye West, um, not really Jay Z till I got older, but Jay Z when I got older, I got into Jay Z after Watch the Throne. That's when I was like, all right, I kind of like Jay Z. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't understand it as much. It was hard for me as a kid, but after Watch the Throne for sure. Um, the Gorillas, I love the Gorillas. Lil Wayne, Cash Money Millionaires. You see, I. I'm always referencing lines from that in, in these songs. I'm always referencing lines from that in these songs. So, yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. What was it about M and 50 that just, like, stuck out to you? 50 made me want to be a thug. I'm going to be honest. Like, he was our superhero. You got to think about that. That cover, that cover of Get Rich or Die Trying, that was like a modern-day comic book at that time. That was like Superman. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you from a certain neighborhood or a certain area or a certain background, black, that's like Superman to us. Everyone had that album, you know? So sure did. Yeah, so for me, that's what that was about. Um, Eminem was I, just the fact that he said the things that I, I couldn't even imagine, like that rebellious attitude, you know? Like, Eminem made me hate my mom for no reason. <laughs> I'll be honest Like I mean not no reason But like really Not really You know what I'm saying So it was funny Like it was funny um, Being influenced by People like that But like those are the, the albums Like uh, Kanye West was the Educated kind of But like still kind of from the hood Like but like proper Trying to dress good Kids So I identify with uh, graduation, I'm sorry, um, college dropout, um, 
as a kid too, so yeah. You being a student of the game, we're celebrating 50 years of hip hop. What does hip hop mean to you? Uh, for me, it means opportunity to change my life. Uh, I wouldn't be able to, you know, do the things I do without it. And it just so happened to be the most popular genre around the time where I was starting to really fly. So everything happens for a reason. It was divine timing, but I really, you know, appreciate the concept and the people and the pioneers who created hip hop because it created uh, stability financially for me and my future. But also it took away like that feeling of, damn, I'm not good at school. What am I going to do in my life? You know, so hip hop is everything. And uh, I'm very thankful for it. To, uh, the fact that it's he it created these avenues. Last question, and this could be open to anything. What is your most memorable hip hop moment? And it could be something you did. It could be something that you saw the first time you heard oh, something. Yeah, uh, uh, the East Coast don't got love for Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. <laughs> I remember being a kid, seeing that like, what the fuck? Like, no, it was crazy. It was crazy. The, that was probably like one of the moments where I was like, damn, it's real. This is really hip hop. <laughs> Bro, that is so funny. That's like one of my most memorable moments too. That whole source of was between that. Yeah. Suge Knight speech. Yeah. Uh Brooklyn, we did it. You know the what I'm saying? South got something the to South say. South got something to that say. That was the same one, right? That was the same one. It was a like, lot of tension in that joint. Well, you know, you gotta realize that was like the first source awards where it was like a true hip hop event like mm -hmm. award show on a national stage gotcha. so everybody was using that as a platform mm -hmm. to really get their message across oh, right. and, and and show out right, you know right, so right. that's why I like like dre was like yo dog the south got something to say <laughs> it was the first of its kind so man it but it was it, it was a lot of crazy moments in there my brother i'm so proud of you man it's yeah, good catching you. up i enjoyed sure. this conversation congratulations on all the success in the project man yeah keep doing your thing bro thank you very much i appreciate you man